Best greetings from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov, and today I do continue the streaming in English language for English speaking audience and of course for Russian speaking audience who can speak English, who can understand English because that's evening time, so it's more convenient time for Americans and for people just who can accept it in a more convenient time just after the job because we need to change the time schedule for the presentation and uh, that's why I do it at evening time and uh, actually because it's a weekend it can be interesting also for a Russian speaking audience who can train English and also can remember the subject which I will be talking about today because the subject for today talk is about the USSR and this is a very funny talk about the USSR at the present time when USSR does not exist and nobody, just very few people do remember what is the USSR was. Actually, many people from all the generation remember about it, but this topic will be devoted to the USSR and moral rules of the USSR. That's very funny, very interesting talk which I was inspired to talk about it when I was watching a video of one young uh, Ukrainian lady which is just owner of YouTube channel Olga Reznikova that her talk was, talk was named Moral Rules of Soviet Union or Moral Values of Soviet Union just it's uh, coming just if you type in in the search moral rules of USSR so it will be coming on the top actually I was uh, listening to this <coughs> presentation uh, Olga Reznikova is a very nice looking lady with the family and her interest in business and her business is devoted to invitation of Americans and foreigners from abroad not only Americans, majority is American. So they're coming to Ukraine to marry nice Ukrainian women. So this is kind of a private dating agency, which is inviting foreigners to marry Ukrainians, Ukrainian ladies, young girls or middle-aged women. And because there is a nice market for that in Ukraine, and of course some foreigners, I don't know, just very few information about the post USSR and about Ukraine and Russia and what is about difference, what was the USSR. But we heard something about it. We heard something about it. That's for them. It's very interesting to listen to this topic. And nice looking lady is very attractive, to be precise. So it's more interesting to listen to her rather than to know this information. Because I found that this information about the moral values of the Soviet Union was not completely correct. In majority, all these facts were just correct, but this is just talking about these things because the young lady who was just a young, happy child in this time couldn't tell you precisely and, okay, sincerely, but not so precisely as she, if she would be just the adult at this time, in the time of USSR. As a child, you do remember about it from a, a nice childhood as a very funny, very pleasant, or maybe different, but uh, you remember about this atmosphere, about political situation, social situation, moral situation, from the stories of your parents. So she was talking a lot of with parents about these moral values, about economical situation in the USSR. So that's why her story was more about, not about moral values of USSR, but more about material values of you in the USSR time. I was just trying to indicate if I'm just online. I hopefully am online. If somebody is watching me, just write me, please. We are from, from Ukraine or from just foreign country. So, what I will be talking about? What's about moral values? I was thinking about moral values. Still, actually, we say 
moral values, they do exist in any time, in any society. They should exist because this is kind of a background and the former ground for economical development of the society. And when we were taking socialism and communism, communism didn't exist at all. This was a kind of a socialism and kind of a capitalism, compare that. We can compare these uh, values. Please write in uh, what country are you from, if you do understand me. Just type in comments or just in comments under this presentation. So, <clears throat> what about moral values? Economical values, they were really different. But moral values, also different. But uh, some, <clears throat> some Sovietologists, they do discuss it, they say the most important, not the declaration of values, but the most important, the results which people and the society received after the usage of these moral values. <clears throat> yes, that's true. But for beginning, for beginning, I will be talking, uh, should briefly review the topic which just Lady Olga Reznikova discussed. Discussed, and I will be just contrary, say what was correct, what was not correct. She said, uh, in the period of USSR, the state was the most important subject, rather than family values, uh, right? And it was even just acceptable by the society when just somebody from uh, the family will be against another member of the family, uh, somebody who was just for the society and who will be fighting against the another member of society. Well, this slogan that family values, law than states values, this was slogan of uh, 30s in the Stalin's time. And later, later, this gradually, these values gradually did in. When it was time, <coughs> my uh, boy, I was Morozo, about the boy, the son, about the son who just betrayed the, his father. Pavlik Morozo, Pavlik Morozo. This was idol of this 30s. When I, Pavlik Morozo betrayed the father and said that his father was against the state. And his father was punished. Well, this was a real slogan of 30s when this was a time of enemies of state. Everyone was spying for another's people. So uh, then the state spied for all the members of society. Yeah, this was a Stalinist time, really. It was very dangerous. It was heavy time for the society. Society still developed produced the industry, agriculture, and so forth, so forth. But the suppression was really high, and everybody didn't know what will be in the future. That's why some people wrote some letters to the KGB about another people. So, and even some people betrayed the members of the families. But later, in 60s, in 70s, in 80s, the accents of in the society changed. At least, uh, at least we will say uh, officially, officially, because uh, in the Soviet time, the economical values and moral values uh, were united with a term of uh, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Many things, uh, the state declared uh, something good, but hypocritically didn't allow people to do it or didn't allow to develop it. But okay, later about it. So I disagree with all these family members who are against another family members members in the Soviet Union. And for for instance, she's the lady Olga Reznikova in her speech, in her presentation said that this interesting uh, term, career builder, uh, this was such existed term, and this was a person who was, was not supported by the society. Well, 
terror builder existed and still exists in this society, but uh, still it exists as about the person who is just jumping, who is just going forward to his career on the head of others and even making crimes, not always uh, based on his personal skills. But in this, yes, uh, <coughs> this is uh, term still exists in the present time. But now it's supported. The society is supported. It. But in, actually, in the Soviet time, in the USSR time, career builder was a usually builder on the base of the, to be the member of Communist Party. The, she missed this very much. There were always some initiative people. Initiative people. Uh, she said, for example, that initiative people. They were not supported by the state. That's not always the truth. Initiative people, active people, they exist, act, activists. They were different. Activists in technology, activists in political activity, activists in a communist party. Communist party, this was major ideology. And of course, activists will fall into the rules. The moral rules, the number one was to be in the Communist Party. To be in the Communist Party, to be in Youth Party of Komsomol, party organization. Youth Organization of Komsomol. This was for young people from 14 till maybe 20, 25, something like that, in this age. And uh, later this gap was filled by the members of a communist party. From 18 till and later, you can enter the communist party if you were supported by two another members of a communist party. Many, many scientists, I'm a scientist, have been the members of a communist party. And many of my friends and my colleagues, they were. I have not been myself because I was supposed to be, I was proposed. What I was thinking about it, I said, I still do not understand what's going on. And still, when I was thinking, the Communist Party collapsed together with the Soviet Union. So, this, because I was not so active in this time in the Communist movement, I was a member of youth organization. And of course, the Communist Party they organized the meeting of a youth party organization together and many now professors they were members of communist party and the leaders of a local uh, local organization that was very normal was very normal because you shouldn't receive uh, promotion if you want to build career to be career builder as Olga Reznikova said you should be in a communist party and not always the members of the Communist Party were bad. In many cases, we were normal people, career builders. They were sucking people. They were bloody people. They were jumping on the head of other people and using some advantages. Now these advantages a little bit transformed and they moved to nervous democratical parties. If someone wants to make career in the party, people are just moving to another democratical party in the former USSR. Or coming to the trade unions, because in trade unions you will be closer, closer to some goods, to some privileges, because Communist Party gave some privileges for limited people, limited amount of people, not for average people, like scientists with a um, scientists were higher than average of people. Average, like a working class, we say, scientists were higher than average. And the, on the top was part, uh, party organization. We were bureaucrats. We were bureaucrats, bureaucrats and members of party. They maintained elite. We maintain elite and which used actually all these privileges of. Um, Soviet ideology and Soviet rules. And that's why all in other moral values, they were serving all these 
ideology of Communist Party. <clears throat> Actually, my opponent, as I was talking about it, Lady Link. Yeah, I do not really give a link, but you can find it. Just type in the uh, moral values of the Soviet Union, Olga Reznikova. Contradictionary way explained most everything about materialism, about different material stuff. She didn't say uh, just very few words about moral values, or uh, by the way, just about family values, for instance. And officially, officially, for instance, in, uh, from already 60s till 70s and later in the former USSR, the former Soviet Union, uh, one of the moral values was family, family, parents and children. And actually it was supported officially by the party and by the state. And some people who had more children, they received a little bit, a little bit advantages because they can claim a little bit for some small privileges, not about uh, just the food, but majority of people were claiming claiming something just for up to receive apartment. Because apartment at this time people could receive free with no money. With no money, that was uh, really true. You was needed to, to be in a queue in your organization for many years. But at the present time, people still staying in the same, in the similar kind of a queue in organization. Oh, for instance, in you see, in official uh, state's department, just for dozens of years. And uh, for instance, she said, in this time, people could not buy the apartment. Yes, this was true for a long time, till in the uh, 80s or even in the 70s, it was allowed to build buildings on the base of money. Even uh, our producer like Eldar Rizana was producing a movie cooperative. Cooperative. This was a union of some people with the money. We came together, we paid it just entrance fee with money and they built it, not they built it, the builders were building. They were members of cooperative. They were, became owners of their cooperative apartments. Uh, usually people could make their private houses. If you couldn't have a money, you can build your private house. So that's not so apartment was a free. If you were a builder, if you were a worker, if you were a scientist, you had you had much, not a moral rule, but you uh, would have pr privilege to be in a queue to receive apartment for free from the state. State give you apartment for free. Ro one room apartment, two rooms, three rooms apartment, just for free. But you could not sell it if you are changing the, the city because of your job. You could exchange, you could exchange apartments with another people who are changing the uh, cities. But without payment, or you should pay a little bit privately if you change small apartment for big apartment. So and people did it, even in a time of a maybe not Stalinist, but in time of a Brezhnev and all others leaders, people did it in the former USSR. So cooperative allowed people to build apartment on uh, using on the base of their own money. Because the disadvantages of the USSR was majority of the material limits, limits of many goods. She said, for instance, you couldn't go to the shop and, and Lady Olga Reznikov could say, you couldn't go to the shop and to buy a TV set, for instance. A TV set actually existed in every room, in every family. Apartments were in a deficit, even as our a uh, very famous artist, uh, Arkady Rakin, was just making a lot of anecdotes and speeches and funny stories about deficit, 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 that's a shortage, shortage of something. Majority was, it, so people say, shortage of everything. 
everything. And this time we didn't have a Pepsi Cola, we didn't have a Coca Cola <coughs> in the Soviet time. Only in a garbage shop time we became uh, Pepsi Cola and a Coca Cola, and McDonald became famous in the former USSR. But it was a star start the beginning of a destruction of a former USSR. Well, but everything was in a shortage, which was the true, really true. Especially, especially it started to be in the end uh, years of uh, Brezhnev. And Brezhnev was a, people say this was a time of stagnation. Stagnation means, but it was time of a relative uh, peace and quiet time. Peace and quiet time. And except last year, this was an invasion to Afghanistan. This was the bloody time of Afghanistan. People started to die despite the Soviet state and the socialist state declared peace and brotherhood. This was a very difficult, contrary point. Soviet state declared peace, but still started the war because wanted to sp with the spreading of ideology in different countries, and Afghanistan was a huge mistake to enter for a longer time because people didn't know and didn't want to know what was really going in this state. But this was a but this was a, a really huge mistake, which costed uh, over ten thousand died Soviet young boys, soldiers in this area. What about another material stuff? Actually about material stuff we would say salary in this time was very low. Very, this is not a moral stuff, this is a material stuff. I will still tell you later about moral <coughs> morality and about moral how it is it moral rules and values later. Still, in the beginning, I will tell you about material values. Salary. Salary was low, but good enough for payment for your community service, for your apartment, and to go to the shop and to buy something, and to buy not everything like now. Uh, like this lady said, now you can go to the shop and buy everything what you want. Every, we don't have a no more shortage. You can buy two, ten different shirts, twenty trousers. You can buy jeans from Turkish Republic or jeans from Malaysia or Pakistan or maybe very expensive from Levis uh, originally from United States. You can use the internet and buy jeans and some other stuff from Canada. If you, it's a free. It's a free. It's so, okay, it's a free, but this is for money. For money. And this time salary was low, but prices were very low. And because of shortages, the distribution was governed, uh, was managed by the state. That was a huge disadvantage. State couldn't manage this distribution of goods for people effectively because. This was a different lawyers of people. On the top, this was elite and party bureaucracy belonging to the Communist Party. Then was uh, um, maybe artists, maybe scientists, maybe then workers, farmers, and then just uh, other people. Okay, such some gradation existed, but this was a middle of society could survive for the salary, even for very low salary. Could survive and survived and survived for very low pension. In contradictionary say, in the present time, salary is very cheap and mostly for to pay for our apartment and uh, pension of people uh, usually less than payments for apartment and less than payment for the food. That was different. So now it's not the same situation. We can go and buy everything. In this time of a deficit, yes, there was shortage of many things because uh, Soviet economy didn't work effectively. Effectively, but created 
deficit, but created uh, all different working places in the, the whole USSR and just tried to make planned economy. This also some kind of hypocritical declaration, but this economy was not very effective because the planned economy and elite and part of parts uh, members of party they used this planned economy for their for their advantages to steal something to steal a lot in hidden stuff in hidden in shadow economy because shadow economy still existed in the former USSR and so they could make some money but they could not spend this money effectively because in the time of a shortage of uh, different goods it was not possible to build a huge four floors or five floors apartment very rich with a swimming pool and we use uh, foreign uh, 10 foreign cars like now rich people can use in a capitalist time because everything was controlled and even such some rich people from a shadow we need to share their profits with the state and with the members of the communist party so but what's the action so this is material stuff shortage uh, and what didn't exist didn't exist freedom and liberal economy liberal economy which means economy when people when there is a free market free market and prices could be regulated because of market economy was economically less effective than in the time of the free economy but still was in many places very effective because to maintain for instance spaceship the whole state was working in different maybe more than 100 or over 100 plants all over the soviet union were working to produce satellites to produce uh, electronics to produce missiles military missiles spaceships and to produce military equipment and military kalashnikov and everything especially missiles and space aircraft Aircra and normal aircraft to antonov tupolev antonov and even uh, helicopters as well everything were maintained in different parts of the USSR and planned economy allowed to work these aircraft these satellites and build them in time and effectively the present time this economy just free economy in the post USSR and in places when government and state do not control it for instance, like in Ukraine, we do not have industry. If a state control it, industry has some support from the government. At least not so planned economy, because number of uh, these uh, uh, plants who provided all these different equipment, for instance, for satellite, for aircraft, or just for spaceship missile decreased but still exist a lot of uh, different plants and they're working for specifically for this purpose so this shortage of uh, different goods was explained also because of this huge military expenses but also because it was economy not completely effective because it was the uh, elite was bureaucracy and planned economy allowed to steal many things and it was as Arkady Reichen said in this time it was a lead a declare and maintain the different laws of society so, uh, when just from members of a communist party from members of uh, different trade organizations and different another organization belonging to their position because if you were in different position you could be you could have higher promotional 
career and you may have more goods yes more food and more all of these goods even some trips and travels abroad so uh, he was laughing about it and everybody knew about it but some people were spreading and distributing not spreading distributing all these goods from deficit just using the telephone rule telephone rule i can give you just one good and he can give me another stuff i can give you something and another person can give another stuff so it was just kind of a natural exchange just using the telephone rule in a shadow economy okay that's still but this is still moral values 